how much do you think you know about Newcastle? Well, I love learning about the history and culture of Newcastle and the general Tyneside area. And the more I learn, the more I read, the more I realise I don't know about the area. And it's fascinating. This is such an interesting place. So what I do is uh, I package these things up, put them into videos so that you can watch and hopefully there are some interest and entertain you in some way. Um, and if you haven't already seen me Newcastle, things you didn't know about Newcastle part one and two, and five things about the Quayside. If you haven't watched those videos, what, you, what have you been doing with your life, man? Get them watched, then come back and watch this one. So in today's video, I'm heading into Newcastle with me two dogs, Lily and Setu. I'm walking from home, from Wardley along the River Tyne, along the Keelman's Way into Newcastle, about four and a half mile. Uh, it's a bit more of an informal video, this one, a bit more of a vlog, a little bit more ad hoc. And I'm gonna show you some interesting things about uh, Granger Town the quayside in one or two other bits so you don't want to miss this video it's coming up so good morning welcome back to my channel it's eddie from tyneside life if you're new here if you haven't seen any of my videos i cover football history and culture of newcastle and the general tyneside area and if you didn't know i moved back to the area in tyneside about three and a half years ago i spent about 13 years living in the lakes mostly um, in cockermouth and if you knew me then uh, you'd probably find me scaling and climbing mountains and uh, quite often camping on the top of them so a completely different lifestyle than i spent nearly three years living in richmond north yorkshire right on the, the border of the yorkshire dales beautiful and uh, it was a bit of a culture shock for me coming back to tyneside it's obviously a, a built-up urban environment i had to uh, go through a period of adjustment but uh, now you know i absolutely love being back home in Tyneside and it's much easier walking my dogs there's no sheep or cows or horses anywhere you've got no idea uh, what a relief that is with owning two collies so some uh, visitors some tourists up ahead there at the uh, Jury's Inn uh, I think I'll approach them see if I can get myself into some mischief see what the crack is we love Newcastle we had a fab night we're here on my hen <laughs> so there you go, I've just met some uh, Scottish lasses on a hen night in uh, Newcastle and it uh, looks like you've had a thoroughly good time. So this is such an exciting decade for Newcastle for several reasons and in no particular order. Behind me, between the Sage and the Baldock, they're redeveloping the land for the new 12,500 seater arena. But there's also going to be a luxury hotel and conference centre just behind me. Pilgrim's Quarter has been redeveloped by the Rubin Brothers to accommodate 9,000 HMRC staff, which is a huge boost to the local economy. But there's going to be a luxury hotel, retail outlets, food, cafes, bars, restaurants, and looking to pedestrianise Blackett Street, uh, uh, reducing traffic in the city centre. Uh, but other hotels and bars and other cafe projects popping up all over the place. Not to mention what's happening in Newcastle United in the exciting times that we face there. I'm still buzzing from Friday night after beating Wolves. So barring an unexpected and catastrophic end of the season where almost guaranteed Premier League status, it's, it's set to be one of the most exciting transfer windows ever in our history. So all of this put together, it brings in tourists, investment, jobs uh, and more money to the area. Exciting times. So this guy here, he's been on the market since the 1970s, selling all sorts of handmade leather crafts. There's a photograph of him there, um, when he's uh, from the 1970s, he's the spitting double of John Lennon. Take a look at that. So if I didn't have the dogs, I'd probably get a, a coffee and a bite to eat here on the quayside because there's all sorts to choose from. It's just a bit tricky with the dogs um, holding their man holding the food. So I'm going to go to a little cafe directly under the Tyne Bridge called the Queen's Cafe. had a delicious sausage sandwich and a cup of coffee in the Queen's Cafe there and uh, while I was downstairs a family from uh, just outside of Belfast come down recognised us and uh, we had a good chat about stuff and uh, they're coming to watch the Newcastle match actually so I'm finding that with this YouTube channel it's bizarre just being recognised everywhere I go and people um, commenting how much they enjoy my channel and fist bumps and selfies it's kind of getting my head around it. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I think we need to talk about Mr. Grey. So the statue on top of that 40 metre monument is Charles Grey or Earl Grey. He was the Prime Minister between 1830 and 1834. 
and uh, he brought a couple of great things in. One was the Reform Act, which restructured the House of Commons and laid the foundations for the voting system that we have today. But also his government oversaw the abolition of slavery in 1833. So great man, did a couple of great things. He's also um, been linked to Earl Grey Tea. Uh, I think it was on a trip to the Caribbean where his bergamot oil was introduced to black tea to give it a bit of flavouring. And he used to serve this type of tea uh, when he was doing the rounds as a Prime Minister, so that's where Earl Grey tea come from. So uh, he's renowned for a couple of things. He also had 16 kids, man. Where do you get the time? Four of them were illegitimate. The controversy with this man is, uh, although he's born up in Northumberland, uh, at Falladon, which is just outside Newton-by-the-Sea, when they built this monument in 1838, he refused to come to the unveiling. And he didn't come to the unveiling because he didn't like Newcastle. Can you believe it? Pride of place in the city centre of Newcastle, looking down Grey Street, didn't like Newcastle. You know what? Get him off. I oh, nearly forgot to mention in 1941 there was a lightning strike, knocked his head off, that to put a new one on. Well, something else you probably didn't know about Grey Street, which is where I am on now, uh, the monument's right in front of us. Grey Street curves down the bank behind me onto Dean Street, then down onto the quayside. Is that underneath here there's a river? It's called Lortburn right now. That river flows down to the River Tyne and plops out round about the Hard Rock Cafe and the source is uh, in and around Leesers Park, cuts through Eldon Square, comes down Dean Street and like I say down to the River Tyne and it was culverted back in the late 1700s but before that it was basically um, just a disgusting stream stroke river where the flesh market used to throw all its scraps in, people you probably just urinated in it and uh, uh, lort for Lord Burn is an old Norse word meaning filthy or dirty. So it was a bit of a sewer, really. And like I say, it was culverted in the late 1700s. And as the decades went on, it was covered with all sorts of soil and muck. And in the mid, uh, like 1830s, 1840s, when they built Granger Town, it formed the, fo the foundation to uh, Granger Town. And what we have now is Granger Street. But further down on Grey Street there, you have High Bridge Street. And it's called that because it was a bridge over the burn. And Lower Bridge was obviously the Lower Bridge, which went over the burn as well. So, but you didn't know that. Yeah, some more really interesting information for you. I'm on Nelson Street by the Granger Market. That building behind me uh, used to be the old music hall, built in 1838 by Richard Granger. Same year as the Granger Market. It's now the Alchemist Pub, which backs into Eldon Square. But Charles Dickens, I, the famous Charles Dickens, who wrote Christmas Carol and Oliver Twist and all those great books, he visited Newcastle six times between 1852 and 1867. Three of those occasions into the music hall, uh, which was uh, on the first floor, was a lecture hall, actually uh, did some readings of his books. Hi, Charles Dickens, man, and he loved Newcastle. This is what he said about the uh, Newcastle audience. A finer audience there is not in England. I suppose them to be especially earnest people, for while they can laugh till they shake the roof, they have a very unusual sympathy with what is pathetic or passionate. But also, um, <laughs> the dirty old man, when he was 45, he had an affair with an 18-year-old Geordie lass called Ellen Turnan, or Nelly, uh, who used to live on um, on Pilgrim Street and Westgate Road. Unfortunately, the music hall and the, the lecture hall have all gone now. Back in 1968, it was all demolished. And all you've got left now is the facade at the front, what you see right now. Do you know what? Before I get me Sunday dinner, I'm going to pop in the time bar and have a pint. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something and you found it interesting and entertaining. If you did, give us a thumbs up. I've thoroughly enjoyed my day out today and I'm heading into Oosburn now. I'm going to get some Sunday lunch at um, the Brinkburn Brewery. So don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Um, bear in mind, I'm not a historian or an expert in any of these things. I'm just putting these things together uh, as a little package. And uh, if I've missed anything out, just leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. So until the next time, catch you later.